Well, hello there, and welcome back to another ROM, Cat, Sat, video, where we are trying to straighten out this messed up world with a little transcendental knowledge. You know it makes sense. Today we are going to get metaphysical, on your booties, so, buckle up, and let's get straight into it. We are going to look at what is real, and what is unreal. There's so much mindless crap in the world, and, if we are honest, it practically saps the very life out of us. The reason it's a drain is, because, the material realm, has no connection, to our soul. It doesn't nourish the deepest aspects of our being, this is why we are never satisfied. The Vedas is saying that, that which has a connection with the real self, the soul, is real. The soul is consciousness in the world of pure consciousness. Let that sink in. We are talking about two worlds, the world of dreams or illusion, and the world of soul, when we operate on the lower plane, the mental plane, the plane of ego, on that level, everything is false. The soul is constitutionally spiritual, therefore, its connection with the lower world, is false, it is illusory. Still that realm has its negative utility. Our finite existence, has an indirect connection, to the infinite. The finite world, therefore, is a shadow of, or a perverted reflection of the complete truth. Take for example an illusion. An illusion is not what it appears to be, but it is not non-existent either. In that way it is real. It has its existence. In the spiritual reality the plane of misconception has no place. In a relative way, the conditioned world has an indirect relationship with the unconditioned world. So illusion is existing. In that sense it is true, but it is false, in that it cannot give the desired result, that we are searching after. Namely, fulfillment. In that sense it is all false. Reality is composed of unreal substance, and, real substance. Misconception, means, I think something is mine, but really it is not mine. Everything actually belongs to the absolute, but we claim, that something is mine, and we fight with one another. The problem is, that the soul is entangled in this fight in the illusory world. Without the involvement of the soul, this world, of fighting and misconception, would have no value. But the dust of spirit, a very infinitesimal part of the spiritual reality, is entangled in this world, and concerned with this world of mock fighting. Another way of understanding misconception, is the sleight of hand, of a magician. A magician's sleight of hand, is all based on misconception. It is false, yet, still we are perplexed by his tactics. That is also true, a magician or hypnotist can show what is not real to be real, and yet while we are under his spell, we cannot deny its reality. Next, we will explain the root of misconception. Take for example a poor man, he's thinking that, if he just had loads of money he would be happy. Yet we see, that a rich man has loads of money and he's also not happy, so the poor man has this misconception, but what is the root of misconception? The original misconception is, that we think we have some separate interest from, the spiritual dimension. That our true interest, is not included within the interest of the divine absolute. The consciousness of separate interest is the root of our problems. We have a connection with the divine, but, whenever the seed of separate interest sprouts, we think, that we have some, separate interest from that of oneness with the supreme absolute. A lot of the time, when we encounter atheists, one of their main demands is, prove it, prove it, prove it. As if the infinite reality, was somehow, subservient to their finite demands. It's laughable, if it wasn't so sad. The point is, how can we know what is real? We are accepting all sorts of things as real only to find out later, that we were misguided. To see color, we need the eyes. To perceive sound, we need the ear. Similarly, in order to see, or realize, the transcendental, we need faith. Faith, is the developed stage, of piety. In terms of pecking order, we see that piety creates faith, and faith, when developed, facilitates the association of saints. Saints are the agents of the divine world, they are situated in the plane of reality, the Nigun wave, beyond this world of creation. Nigun, is a Sanskrit word which means, that, which has no mundane quality. The saints come to establish within our soul, some connection with reality. That, is the deepest element. 
the connection with saints develops one's faith, and faith can see reality. There is a world which is only approachable by faith. Only faith can see and feel it. The supreme reality cannot be perceived with any other senses. Faith is the real function of the soul. And that faith is awakened by the agents of the limitless world. Through faith one's association with saints increases, and by this transaction the culture of reality takes place. Gradually this process makes us become fully conscious. At that time, we will realize that this world in which we are living is all transient, and that our home is elsewhere. Our real home is located in the world of pure consciousness. Perceiving spiritual reality is the function of the soul, and not that of the material ego or senses. When a patient is unconscious, the doctor gives him an injection. And then, when the patient regains his consciousness, he can cooperate with the doctor by describing his symptoms. But before one can cooperate with the doctor, the doctor does different things to help the unconscious patient. In the same way, when we are fully engrossed in material engagement, the saints from the higher plane of reality act like doctors to inject some understanding of divinity into our consciousness. In this way they try to awaken our spiritual self-interest by making us conscious of the soul. Okay. You ugly mofos. That will do it for this one. I'll see you on the other side. Om. Cat. Sat.